Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Wow, it has literally been so long since I've said that. I keep meaning to make my YouTube return. I keep getting a little bit scared to open up my life again. Thought I'd start off my return to YouTube with a Q&A. So I've been asking you guys lots of questions on Instagram to get to know me again and have a whole life catch up. First question, life update please. Now literally we have a whole two years to catch up on. I feel like since my last vlogs, so much has changed. Been on an absolute roller coaster. Honestly, the past few months, I've really settled back down again in Dubai and I'm feeling really, really good. You can maybe see that I'm posting from a new location from my old videos. I used to always think, why do people stay at home so much? But until you have your own place, you don't actually realize how fun it is to nest and have candles on and watch films. Okay, so the reason why I've actually avoided doing my YouTube or Instagram, I've kind of taken a little step back is the breakdown of my relationship. And the most burning question that everyone wanted to know was, what happened with your relationship? Why did you move out your house? Are you single? Are you still with them? And <laughs> I guess I've kind of been avoiding this question, just like doing my own thing for a while. I do know that obviously I went from 20,000 followers to 200,000 in the space of like six months in Instagram. And I know that's when I was posting my relationships so publicly. So I do understand why you guys want to know what happens. I'm the same. Like when I see people post their boyfriends nonstop and you follow the journey, you don't see them anymore. You feel like you've been so invested, if that makes sense. Yes, I did break up with my ex-boyfriend. It's a hard one because I want to tell you like exactly what happened, but at the same time, I do sort of want to like respect his privacy. But obviously I seen that man as being the love of my life. Now I'm not going to sit and say my relationship was awful because it wasn't. Honestly, like he was my absolute best friend. As a friend, he is the best guy ever, but just like as a boyfriend, I can't really tell you the details in and out of what happened, but it literally destroyed me. You know, obviously living in Dubai, I would say there's lots of temptation for guys around here and it's very, very hard to maintain a relationship. I thought we were both in it for life, but he maybe thought otherwise. I was in and out of like retreats. I was talking to counselors. I was trying to do everything to like get my head back together because I literally couldn't see any light at the end of the tunnel. I think it was so obvious online how much I loved that person and like dedicating my whole life to them. I now realize it's the wrong thing to do because I think in losing that relationship, I really lost myself and it took me a long, long time to come back from that. I did actually break up once and then we got back together. I don't regret doing it. I think I, owed it to the relationship and myself to try and see if it could work. But in doing that, I just let everything eat away at me and eat away. It's actually really frustrating for me because I feel like I really let myself down and it honestly made me like insane. I was doing all these crazy, crazy things and in the end, I just snapped. And it's so frustrating because no one sees the lead up to what made me like that. And never again will I ever trust when a guy says, oh, my ex-girlfriend's a psycho. No, you obviously made her like that. I think once the trust is broken, you really cannot get it back. When we broke up the second time, I'd say I was sort of, you know, more than ready to let that relationship fully go and just work on myself from that point on. Not waste any more time and get back to living my life and doing me again, which is what I've been doing, I'd say, for the past year. Life's been good, ladies. Life has been good. So that leads in to the next question of how much have you grown in the past two years? Say going through all that trauma for the past two years, I mean, it's ironic I was putting myself in retreats to get better when probably should have been the other person doing that for themselves. I really got into wellness. Honestly, like it was the best thing I've ever done. I don't know if you guys remember, I actually went on a retreat to Zanzibar. Even there, I just thought like, do you know what? I am actually really strong as a person. I think I doubted myself a little bit before. Say in the past six months, I really learned about myself how much I love life. I don't think anyone has been like traveling as much as me, just doing the crazy stuff that I have done. I literally like grab life by the balls and just go for it. Like I'm never letting anyone hold me back ever again. That's my new motto. And I think honestly, you actually become more attractive to people. Like everyone the whole summer was like, wow, you're glowing. Wow, your energy. That's just, you know, how I've been growing. Just focusing on myself, working on myself and looking forward to a positive future. Next question, what's your job in Dubai and what's your daily routine? <laughs> the past sort of four years, I was just focusing on my social media career. That's when I had my YouTube going, my Instagram, I was doing all my collabs. 
I was earning such good money. Honestly, at that time, influencers in Dubai were flying. And I was really fortunate. I just got to sort of save all of this money. In the past year, I wouldn't advise anyone to do this, but when I was trying so desperately to regain my happiness, I packed up everything, <laughs> packed my suitcases and booked a lot of holidays and just sort of lived off my savings. Do not do that, but it was really good at the time because I'm as happy as I am now. <laughs> Back to Dubai now, I would say influencing these days, there really isn't that much money to be made in it anymore. It's really a saturated market so i have been doing lots of different promotional jobs when i used to live in the uk i actually worked as an event manager for various agencies i worked for really high global brands like samsung dior dolce and gabbana managing staff and you know really like maximizing results for clients so i picked that back up in dubai i've been working for a few different agencies out here this week i was working on an amazon conference next week i'm at the beauty world trade show so it's really exciting every week there's something different and you can sort of pick up work as and when you like which is really good for living in Dubai just to go back to what is your daily routine in Dubai I wake up at like seven eight o'clock I started back with a personal trainer and I've really been getting into the gym so I'm in there for like 8 30 now I never used to be an early type of girl I am now a get up and seize the day queen. There's a little cafe upstairs. I eat my egg whites, have my protein shake. Some days obviously I have the day off. I'm taking pictures. I'm out with my friends and other days I am working. Then I'd say I normally finish at like six, seven o'clock home. I cook dinner and I get really cozy in my pajamas with a face mask and candles. It is my favorite thing to do. People used to know me as like a big party girl and I do think I really excelled in that for a little while. Honestly, I've changed. I became a cozy queen. You might catch me out on a Saturday, but honestly, apart from that, I've actually become quite boring. Since I turned 28, the old age is really hitting me. In terms of my Instagram, someone asked me, what do you influence people on? I don't know if that was a dig or if that was like a genuine question. I've never claimed to be like a fashion or beauty influencer. I work with brands and I do love their clothes at the same time, but I do think people mainly follow me and they always say this for lifestyle. I've always been a big, big traveler. Like when I was um, in university, I used to work all through my semesters in terms i used to work like four jobs save 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 and then that meant i could travel all summer always had the travel bug and as soon as i graduated uni i left and i moved country as well traveling is like my passion i'm always you know at really cool resorts all over the world and always get questions where's best to go where's best to stay what airline do you travel with you collect miles if you're a fan on that collect your miles you can get loads of free flights throughout the year but yeah i would say it is mainly just lifestyle what i'm up to people want to know what my friends are doing what we're up to in Dubai. It's so different from like living in the UK. So yeah, I do think that's why people follow me and hopefully I am interesting to follow. What has been your favorite place to travel to? Now, this is like such a hard one because honestly, like I've been to some really, really cool places. I can't narrow it down. I'd have to give you a top three. First one, Zanzibar. I touched on this when I was at the retreat. It was amazing. Honestly, we went out in little handmade dow wooden boats. I swam with turtles. I went to an island that a prison used to be on and there were these big Galapagos tortoises as well. It was so different. It was vibes, the energy, the people there were just incredible. Highly recommend going and it's super affordable as well. My second favorite place I've traveled to is Cape Town in South Africa. Again, so much to do there. Me and my friend Anna actually paraglided off of Table Mountain, which was really cool. I'm a little bit of a daredevil. If you get to know me, I'm not really scared of anything. I'm a thrill seeker. So things like that, I absolutely love. And my last favorite place to travel to would be the USA. I think I've spent two or three months there this year. I don't know if some of you know, but my dad was actually born in Los Angeles. He has lived in Scotland most of his life now, but his dad was originally from there and he has maybe like nine or 10, I'm maybe getting the number wrong, brothers and sisters, those two still live in the US and they're mainly based in California. When I was at uni in the summers, I would go over and stay there and I got to know their friends and I made such a big friend group who are now my own friend group and we traveled to loads of places together. Like we've been to Tulum, we went to Cabo, we recently went to St. Bart's for New Year's Eve as well, which was like unreal. So it's like a home away from home from me. I've got all my friends there. It's like a whole other life. So when Dubai gets too much, I love to escape there. I spent quite a lot of time in Miami this year as well. I love it so much. Only place I think I could actually live in the world if I had to move from Dubai. It's so nice. It's like on the water and I've got my whole friendship group out there now as well. I highly recommend everyone to go. It's so glam. It's just amazing. I love it. 
Tell us about the most exciting time you've had in your life. This is actually so hard because I have the craziest stories and like I always tell people about things in my life and they're like, what? Like, did that actually happen? Like, you couldn't even write this stuff. One day I actually hope to talk about all of this, but <laughs> I'd say the main sort of like pinnacle or something that I can pinpoint as being the most exciting time in my life was probably moving to Dubai. Because I do think if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have had any of these opportunities or crazy experiences. Like it all sort of spiraled from that moment. I get asked quite a lot of times, like, how did you actually move there? So what happened was I graduated university and I was due to start a graduate job in the September. Now bear in mind it's the May, so I had like all these travel plans and when it got to the very end, I think it was like end of August, I was in Ibiza and I kept thinking, oh my God, no, I've got to go home. I had this job starting doing business consulting with the Scottish government. I just kept thinking like, I feel like I'm too young to be stuck in an office Monday to Friday, nine to five. And just out of sheer luck, I got speaking to someone that day. And he was like, I actually know someone that wants 10 girls to come out and work in Dubai to promote their events out there. They're gonna pay for your accommodation, for your flights. So instantly for me, I was like, no brainer, please send my application. I didn't actually hear anything for like two weeks and I was back in Scotland in the rain thinking oh no this is like my life. All of a sudden I got this text saying listen are you free to move out to Dubai but I want you there in two days time. So I was like oh my god like what do I do? I spoke to my dad at the time and he was like listen your car lease is coming to an end. Close your phone contract. You don't have a boyfriend. Just go. You can always come home. And my best friend Robin was actually out there at the time and she said just get out here. Start off. Get your bearings and then you can always get another job. I packed my bags, left on the train down to London. I remember crying at my mum and dad, waving them off when I was going. Met all the girls in the airport, some of my best friends still to this day. It was a good little group of us going and we all instantly became best friends, moved over. And honestly, like the rest is history from that point onwards, the people I met, the opportunities I got, everything just snowballed from there. Someone's asked, do you think Dubai has changed since you moved there? I would say definitely. It's crazy. They just throw whole islands up in the middle of the sea in a year. You're like, where did this come from? Where did that come from? And I would say now as well, there's just so many expats here. So many British people have moved out. And I moved out six years ago now. I can't actually believe it's been that long there was a british group out here and it was a large british group don't get me wrong but since then the influx of people has just been crazy i would say as well it's definitely not as strict as it used to be when i moved here you could wear shorts but you'd probably get some funny looks but now it's a lot more relaxed what i do love about it is there is still like the core values you know crime is really low because there's strict punishments i think is great no one litters in the street. Things like that haven't changed. And honestly, it's just such a nice lifestyle out here. So into fitness, you wake up, the sun is shining every day. There's always something on. Whether that be, you know, you wanna do a cycle or a run on Kite Beach or to the more extreme, whether you wanna party with a celebrity or drive about in a Lamborghini, you literally have a mix of everything here and that's why as a 20 something year old i think it is the best place in the world to live okay someone has asked three things i can't live without i would say number one is probably my phone because like i could make up things but realistically who can't live without their phone these days and do you know what i always say as well like i'm so grateful for growing up when we were kids we didn't have phones so we're so sociable and know how to interact and we got phones and social media just as we were becoming late teens, early adults. So I would say most of my friends, all through people you follow online and that's how you meet new people. So yeah, phones can live without. Second thing I couldn't live without is probably an aeroplane. Honestly, when I stay in Dubai for too long, everyone knows this about me. I get really antsy and itchy. I just wanna see the world. I keep thinking to myself, oh, I'll fit this in and I need to fit this in. I wanna go to this new place and I don't really like to sort of revisit a lot of places. I like to have new experiences, new cultures, meet new people. It's just what I'm all about. Third thing I can't live without is love. Honestly, I just love having people around me, whether that be like romantic love, friendship love. I'm actually a really big softy deep down and I'm very sensitive. So I just love, love. <laughs> Second last question. What have you learned from your past? I would say you can achieve anything. It's cliche, but I really do believe that. I think back to when I was like 15 years old and I used to be sat in my bedroom in Scotland and I always thought, I just want more from my life. You all know I'm from a small town in Scotland. You like the opportunities there aren't as massive as what's out there in the world. I thought I'm gonna create my own opportunities. I'm gonna make this life for myself. So grateful every day that I actually managed to be where I am now. I couldn't even dream of living in this beautiful apartment or 
have experiences I've had in my life, but I actually made them happen. So what I would say that I've learned in my life is just don't stop and don't let anyone hold you back. And lastly, we'll end with a nice one. Where do you see yourself in three years time? A really hard one because when I think back to three years ago, when I was like 25, I totally see myself at that point being married, having kids, obviously my whole life just flipped itself on its head and now for the next three years especially now I'm getting a bit older I do sort of panic because almost females you're thinking my body clock like oh my god I'm approaching 30 all I can say is like life just keeps getting better and better I don't kind of want to plan ahead I just hope in the next three years that I'm extremely happy that's first and foremost I want inner peace and true happiness which I'm working towards and on the way there I would like a family but I'm not putting pressure on that if it happens it happens and lastly I would really like to have a successful business a really good idea on the pipeline which I'm gonna really start working on now so yeah hopefully health happiness inner peace family relationship and business thriving that is where i'd like to see myself and oh my gosh i'd be 31 by that point but you know what girls we're all getting better with age these days <laughs> okay so that is me answered all of the good questions that i picked out i hope that gives you a little bit more of an insight into what i've been up to for these past two years i think since my last ask me a question i watch it back it makes me cringe and i feel like i'm like such a little girl in it whereas now i feel like i'm a young woman <laughs> i'm definitely more mature since then or am i no, probably not. Anyway, I do hope you liked this video. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.